Welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition with licensed nutritionists and dietitians from Nutritional Weight and Wellness. We explain the connection between what you eat and how you feel. Stay tuned for practical, real-life solutions for healthier living through real food nutrition. Slow down, you move too fast. You got to make well, the moment to last. Dishing Up Nutrition, brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. I'm Darlene Kvist. And you know, about 30 years ago, I started Nutritional Weight and Wellness with very little financial support. And I remember that well. (laughs) I'm sure you do. (laughs) But with a big desire to help people feel better through their food choices and lifestyle habits. Then, you know, about 15 years ago, we started the Dishing Up Nutrition radio show and podcast. You know, I was already at an age when many of my friends were retiring, but not me. Of course not. (laughs) I had a strong desire to spread our message of eating real food to all parts of the world. Some people, especially my son, (laughs) laughed at my dream, (laughs) but I'm happy to say mission accomplished. Absolutely, Dar. We recently received an email from a delightful woman who listens to Dishing Up Nutrition from India. Wow. She said, thank you. Your simple message of eating real food has changed my life. We love hearing those life-changing stories from our listeners. Now, you kind of know a little bit more about me. People always want to know about me for some reason. So now, let's learn a little bit more about our co-host, Carolyn Hudson. She's been a registered dietitian for many, many years. She'll probably tell you how many. (laughs) (laughs) Carolyn and I are the senior members of Nutritional Weight and Wellness team. And Carolyn has a passion Also, she also has a passion for helping people understand the power of eating real food. Carolyn, you know, tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself, where you went to school, you know, where you've practiced, and your favorite, your very favorite hobby, scuba diving, right? Oh, sure. (laughs) Good morning, Dar. It's so nice to be here, and good morning to all of our listeners out there, wherever you are. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I actually grew up here in Minnesota, but then I decided to pursue my nutrition degree in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So my career has really been varied, to say the least. I've worked with Canadian indigenous people in oh, very interesting. far northern Ontario communities, uh-huh. even on an island in the middle of Hudson's Bay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I had to take a big, um, I had to take a, a plane. Well, like a, a little plane, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and it had skis on it. It was right. in the middle of winter. We landed on uh, in the middle of Hudson's Bay. It was frozen over. And then I loaded into a big, huge bombardier, like a big ski do. Uh-huh. And they took me to the hospital there on the island. <laughs> so, you know, Carolyn, my first degree was in anthropology. Oh, I didn't know that. I would have loved that. Oh, you know, it was fascinating. Cultures. Yes fascinating i actually got stuck there in a snowstorm for four days but um (laughs) that was just one of the things that i did um but i also had the opportunity to be the senior director for a very large medical system it included a large teaching hospital so i had uh, a dietetic internship program underneath me and uh did uh i had uh, a senior living center I had a nursing home and another small community hospital. Wow. So that was a huge system. And I had lots of different employees and lots of different unions. So Mm -hmm. that was that was very interesting. But But, more recently, I um, got certified as a well coach. Okay. And now I have dark. Really, this is my dream job. (laughs) Oh, good. (laughs) It really is. You know, all the wonderful nutritionists and dietitians that I get to work with and I get to work with you. um, It's just it's been a dream come true because I really wanted to get back to helping people People. one on one. And as Mm -hmm. a senior director, I never got to do that. You know, yes, I was managing people. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't doing nutrition, really. (laughs) So now I get to do that. And then, as you mentioned before, one of my hobbies is scuba diving. I love the water. Anything to do with scuba diving. And I started to go down to uh, visit my brother every winter. He lives in Cozumel. And I thought, I am going to get certified to dive. I'm watching all these Uh divers down there. So now I love it. I love the underwater life. And 
um, all the beauty of the coral and the fish and everything. It's really great. So if you make an appointment with Carolyn, you got a lot of interesting things that you can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so now today, let's go on with our topic. You know, do your genetics determine your health? You know, well, that's an interesting question, actually. Many of our clients say, you know, my dad had diabetes, so I know I will have diabetes too. So stop and think about that. Do you really believe that statement? Here's another one we hear all the time. My mother has has or had Alzheimer's, so I'm worried. I'll get Alzheimer's one day. So is Alzheimer a genetic disease or is it linked to our food and lifestyle habits? Now, that is a new thought for a lot of people I know. It really is. And I hear the same things. Oh, I don't want to get diabetes mm-hmm. because, you know, my mother, my father, my brother or whatever has it. So most people do think it's more genetic. Right. So many of my clients also have a fear of Parkinson's because their grandfather had Parkinson's. Well, and there's so many more cases of Parkinson's right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've really been seeing that. Um, one other common belief I hear from clients is my grandmother had arthritis. Oh, yes. So I know I'm going to end up with arthritis. So I want you to ask yourself, does every common chronic disease come from genetics? What do you think? Hmm. Well, we're going to explore this a little bit more. You know, about 15 years ago, I attended a seminar where I had the pleasure of hearing Dr. Jeffrey Bland make this statement. 90% of our health is from our food choices and lifestyle habits, and 10% is from our genetics. You know, I sat back and I said, really? I remember this very well. You, you may be wondering, well, who is Dr. Jeffrey Bland? If you've never heard of him, we want to share a little bit about his life and some of his remarkable achievements. Dr. Jeffrey Bland is known as the father of functional medicine, which is kind of a medical approach that focuses on prevention and treatment of chronic diseases. Dr. Bland was a university biochemistry professor he served as the Nutritional Research Director of Linus Pauling Institute Science and Medicine, and he's the co-founded the, UNIS, the Institute for Functional Medicine. You know, in, in addition to his superior intellect, I mean, amazing intellect, and knowledge, Dr. Bland really has a lot of good heart. Yeah. He's got a lot of feelings for people. You know, Dar, I want to just emphasize what you said earlier mm-hmm. that 90 percent of our health is from our food choices and lifestyle habits and only 10 percent is from our genetics that's, that's that this, quote that's, from dr jeffrey bland that is amazing yes i don't think i think most people think it's the exact opposite right i agree yes yeah. mm-hmm. but in 19 or sorry 19 in 2014 <laughs> i'm starting to age myself here uh, dr jeffrey bland wrote the book uh the disease delusion conquering the causes of chronic illness for a healthier longer and happier life in this book he explained that we have two different types of Ill- illnesses One type of disease comes from an infection, Mm -hmm. like a bacteria or a virus. Right. Uh, And until recently, with the onset of COVID-19, these diseases were basically controlled with medication, uh, such as a round of antibiotics or from um, a vaccine. Right. Mm -hmm. Many of those Um, with these medications, fewer people actually died of an infection and uh, life was pretty good. Right. Yeah. And then along came a variety of chronic diseases. These chronic conditions and illnesses that make you sick and rarely, if ever, go away. That's an interesting way to think about Mm -hmm. it. You know, once you have diabetes, oh boy, you have to work really hard to get rid of it. So what are some of these diseases? Type 2 diabetes, gout, high blood pressure, dementia, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, MS, autism, depression, ADHD, asthma, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, macular degeneration, cancer, and the list goes on and on and on and on, doesn't it? Did I catch what listeners, (laughs) did you fit into one of those categories? 
Yeah, that's amazing. That list is really long of those chronic yep. diseases. And we work with a lot of those people that have chronic diseases. Mm-hmm. So, so why do we call these chronic diseases? A chronic illness does not heal by itself. And sadly, a chronic illness usually gets worse over time. Mm-hmm. So that's that another be, interesting thing yeah, to think that, about. That can be really hard. So typically, a chronic disease does not have a single cause. Plus, a chronic disease, a chronic illness, tends to have more complex symptoms. So do you have one of these chronic diseases? What I found to be really shocking is that 40% of Americans now have some type of chronic disease. And, Dar, it's time for our first break oh, okay. already. Okay. So you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition, brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. Because of COVID-19, everyone at Nutritional Weight and Wellness continues to practice all of the recommended safety procedures. Our nutrition consultations are being conducted by phone or through a live video appointments rather than in person. You can make an appointment uh, either by phone at 651-699-3438 or online at weightandwellness.com. If you have questions about how nutrition may help you at this particular time, just call us or email us. Perhaps you even have a question about your health insurance coverage and coming in for an appointment or even about an ingredient in one of our recipes. We're going to be very happy to talk to you on the phone and answer all of your questions. So give us a call at 651-699-3438 and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. You know, this past week, I had a call from a client I worked with maybe three or four years ago. And then out of the blue, she set up an appointment to see me. And after all these years, so you had wonder, why did she set up an appointment? No, she had not fallen off of a real food plan. She is thinking about having a baby in the next two to three years and wants to make sure her nutrition will rep- provide the best support for her pregnancy. That is so cool. Yeah, I said, you are one smart lady. Yes. Because we read about this all the time, don't we, Carolyn? Mm-hmm. Ancient cultures understood how important good nutrition was for a healthy pregnancy and for a healthy baby. So many of our nutritionists and dietitians have firsthand knowledge of how to provide the best support throughout a pregnancy and early childhood feeding. Many of our young nutritionists yes. have one or two or three <laughs> or four babies. <laughs> so let us know if you would like to meet with one of our nutrition experts to learn how good nutrition will help you have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. I think it's so neat that people are thinking this way now. Yes. Yeah. So just call our office at 651-699-3438. Set up an appointment that's convenient to you and ask your questions. So before we went to break, um, I was saying that we found it shocking that 40% of Americans now have some type of chronic disease. That's a lot. 40%. So, you know, listeners, think about this. Here's a question for you. Does 40% of the population have a chronic disease caused by their genetics? Or is there something else going on? You know, in the 1900s, two of the chronic diseases that everybody seems like they get is cancer and heart disease. It count, accounted for about 18% of the population of the deaths of popul- of the deaths. Mm-hmm. Actually, 18% of the deaths. Now, in the last, oh, 100 to 120 years, the percentage of deaths from a chronic disease has jumped to 63%. Wow. They went from 18% up to 63%. So that's not genetic. <laughs> no. So perhaps chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other autoimmune diseases are not from our genetics but rather from our lifestyle habits. Mm-hmm. I think we're, with COVID-19, we're hearing that more and more and more. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was listening to an NPR special. I think it was just yesterday. And they were really talking about that and really, you know, trying to explain, no, it's not, uh, you know, these chronic diseases or people that have these conditions and are more susceptible to getting really ill with COVID-19. It's that they've got these chronic diseases and right. it's, you know, more about their lifestyle and how how they've gotten to that pl- place. 
So how are chronic diseases related to lifestyle habits? Let's look at the relationship of genetics and lifestyle habits in another way. Think about the autoimmune condition called celiac disease. I'm sure many of you remember Cassie. She's one of our frequent co-hosts on the show. And she mentioned that she has a gluten sensitivity, but her son actually has celiac disease. Celiac disease is considered a genetic condition, right? Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. But it only when gluten is actually eaten. Isn't so that if, interesting? Yeah. So if they didn't eat gluten, even though they ha- they are celiac, yes, they will not ex- uh, experience the symptoms. So, and I hope I don't uh, mess this name up. It's an <laughs> Italian, Dr. Alessio Fasano. Oh, good uh, job. <laughs> a pediatric gastroenterologist and director of the Center for Celiac Research explains it this way. Some individuals carry the genes that increase the susceptibility to celiac. But those individuals carrying the genes will not experience the disease unless or until they actually eat gluten. Isn't that neat? That's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it really is. You have that genetic condition, but if you don't eat that product, you don't get it. Yeah, and I think, you know, and I I haven't really talked to Cassie about this when her son was diagnosed, but I do know that, you know, as a baby, you're not given gluten right away, right? You know, (laughs) (laughs) hopefully you're being breastfed and um, and so there's no gluten. But once that child is introduced to those wheat products or cereals or whatever it happens to be. Yep. Then they start experiencing the symptoms and there's a failure to thrive, usually in most cases when it's true celiac disease. So when these individuals do eat gluten, the gluten actually becomes a toxin in their body and creates chaos. If they only eat wild rice that contains no gluten, no chaos is created in the body. And therefore, there's really no damage that gets done. So, However, so, Carolyn, when you think about that, when you were working in the remote, remote, <laughs> I'll get there, um, villages, um, if, if they had a celiac gene and they didn't eat that, they were okay. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if they do eat a slice of bread, especially like whole wheat or a a wheat bread, Mm -hmm. um, the gluten in that bread becomes a toxin. And that's going to wreak havoc in their body. Dr. Fasano's example uh, about celiac disease explains why we may have a genetic susceptibility to to the disease, but it is our lifestyle and eating habits that actually pull that trigger and create that chaos in our body. So I have a personal example of being susceptible to type 2 diabetes. You know, my mother was diabetic, and I believe her father, my grandfather, was diabetic, and one of my brothers is diabetic. On the other hand, in my early 20s, I decided I was not going to become diabetic. You know, now I'm 82, and I'm not. And I have never been diabetic. Yay. That's because I got serious about my nutrition. And I mean, I'm very serious about this. You know, I do check my blood sugars all the time Mm -hmm. and uh, all the things that you need to do. So this was before you became a nutritionist. Yes. Way before. Yes. So I think that's really important. Right. For people to to hear that, that you took this action um, before you knew well, all the things you know now about nutrition, and you were able to change that course of action. Right. And hey, it hasn't been easy. No. No. So, you know, so really, I was determined not to become type, I have become type 2 diabetic. I mean, I, you know, so even 60 years ago, I honestly understood the relationship between eating sugar. And processed carbs. I don't know how I did knew that. You know, it wasn't in any of my college classes for sure. So, but it was just living with my parents and my mom and knowing the things. So, 
So sugar and processed carbs increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. I mean, I think we all know that. You know, I'm sure I have that genetic predisposition or vulnerability of being diabetic, but consciously I chose not to go there. You know, and I believe many of us have a genetic susceptibility to a chronic disease, but it is what we choose to put into our mouths that will determine if we get one or of these conditions. And I think we must have a yep. break. Huh? Where you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you're struggling with joint discomfort, I want you. I want to suggest two very beneficial supplements. Uh, one scoop or one or two scoops of key collagen and two capsules of joint revive. The good news is you can save 15% on both. Have you ever tried one of those deprivation diets that make you thinner for a while but looking all haggard and sad? I'm here with Anastasia who has the reverse going, that radiance of good health. Anastasia, you credit the nutritional counseling you got at Nutritional Weight and Wellness. Yeah, I met with Joanne about three years ago. She definitely helped me lose a good 20 pounds. But in addition to that, I stopped drinking energy drinks. And as a result, I no longer battle with restless leg and I sleep through the night. How else other than your weight have the changes that you made impacted your health? I focus better. I sleep through the night. I can remember people's names. And what about the food you're eating now? I get to eat all the protein, fruits and veggies. I shop at the grocery store like everybody else. And can you eat out with your friends? I do. I might edit my meal a little bit, but I'm still out at the bars and restaurants with all my friends and family. Could Nutritional Weight and Wellness help you like they helped Anastasia? You can check them out at weightandwellness.com or give them a call, 651-699-3438. Well, welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. You know, last night I was on the phone with my 17-year-old granddaughter, Willow. And of course, I think she's special. She's my granddaughter. Of course. (laughs) So I asked her, do you listen to the podcasts? And she said, I listen to podcasts all the time. So then I ask her, do you listen to the Dishing Up Nutrition podcast? You know, I know that she is sensitive to gluten grains. And I thought a little education goes a long way. She said, is your podcast on Spotify? And I said, <laughs> yes, it is. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> then Willow replied, okay, I will listen. You know, I think any of our Dishing Up Nutrition podcast would be a great way for you to help your kids or your entire family get some real food nutrition education. So if you do that, let me know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have clients that uh, say that they turn it on and uh, listen, especially, you know, like when they're making a meal or whatever, and the kids will come in and, of course, they listen a little sure, bit, right? Sure. So yeah, they exactly. pick things up. We're getting it. To anybody will listen. We will tell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, Tom, before we went to break, we were talking about um, type 2 diabetes. We talk all about uh, that a lot, don't yep. we? Mm-hmm. And blood sugar problems. And they've been in the news a lot lately because of COVID-19. Because people with diabetes face a higher chance of experiencing some of those serious complications from COVID-19. When diabetics do not manage their diabetes well and they experience that roller coaster, Mm -hmm. blood sugar, um, they are generally at a higher risk for a number of diabetes related complications. So what we do and what we eat impact how our genes express themselves, either in a positive manner or in a negative manner. Okay, so let's let's dig in a little bit more on this topic. Judith Finnelison, and she was actually on our show at one time. She's the author of You Are What Your Grandparents Ate, said it very nicely. I love the way she wrote. Well, our DNA doesn't change, but stressors, including poor nutrition. So she connects poor nutrition with a stressor. And when you have poor nutrition, it can spark a reaction to change how our genes express themselves, increasing the risk for a wide variety of chronic diseases, you know, from heart disease and diabetes to all kinds of cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. So let's go back to the thoughts and writings of Dr. Jeffrey Bland. He said, according to the World Health Organization, the cost of chronic disease will hit get this, 200 
billion dollars by the year 2030. That's not very, that's 10 years from now. Yeah, 200 billion. And that is mostly due to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases like asthma or chronic kidney disease, cancer, and dementia. And who would ever think of connecting dementia with their nutrition? Yeah, right. <laughs> they, I, I, it's amazing. Yes. So it may surprise you to learn that dementia may be the most costly of all chronic diseases. And I, I can understand that. Yes. But, you know, so in 2012, over $200 billion was spent in the U.S. on research to find a way to treat dementia. But as yet, no effective drug for the management of de- dementia has been developed. On the other hand, there's a lot of research. A variety of clinical studies indicate that lifestyle changes can improve mental functioning. You know, even right here in, in our state, a study by the Mayo Clinic found that early intervention to stop negative lifestyle habits and replace them with positive lifestyle habits delays the onset of dementia. So, you know, if you're 82 and you don't get it for another 20 years, you're pretty you're pretty safe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can look, look at my mom. She's yes. 92. She's not experiencing any uh, signs of dementia or, no. you know, memory loss or anything. Isn't you that know. beautiful? That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to be her. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been teaching uh, nutrition for about... 40 years, (laughs) and I believe more people are starting to connect the reality that to have the best health possible, they need to eat real food. And by real food, I mean like protein from some of those grass-fed animals, vegetables, not so much the bread or rolls, and good natural fats like butter and olive oil and avocado oil and coconut oil. That's just to name a few. And they really do need to avoid those refined damaged fats such as soybean oil or corn oil or cottonseed oil or canola oil. All of those are highly processed and refined. So we call those damaged fats, don't we, Dar? Yes, we do. <laughs> but you know what came to my mind when, I was, when you were talking about that? I was thinking of the people that drive through the fast food restaurants and get French fries. Oh, and have you seen the lines at those fast food restaurants lately? Oh, my goodness. So, you know, that French fries are cooked probably in either soybean oil or corn oil. And the oil is used over and over and over. And then potatoes. You know, if you have a little bit of potato. That's that's, okay. But French fries, you probably have, you know, French fries turn into sugar. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that people just don't get. Yeah, French fries turn into sugar. I had a friend ask me once, uh, I said, "What? What? How much sugar is in this?" And I said, "Oh, you really don't want to know." But I will tell you, two French fries are going to equal about a teaspoon of sugar. Yes. So, and it, you know, and then it's cooked in bad fat. Mm-hmm. So, but too much sugar, and too much bad fat, bad for your brain. Right. I mean, simply. Yeah. Very simple. So there are more than a hundred. Confirmed autoimmune diseases. Wow. A hundred. That's amazing. Actually, about 50 billion or million, 50 million people, Americans, suffer from at least one autoimmune disease. So maybe ask you a question, listeners. Are you one of those who suffer from an autoimmune disease? You know, in comparison, and I love this, 12 million Americans are suffering from cancer, 25 million from heart disease. This may be a little hard for people to believe, but autoimmune diseases are directly linked to diet and lifestyle habits. And, of course, it's linked to heart disease and it's linked to type 2 diabetes. It's all linked to our diet and And lifestyle lifestyle habits. Yeah, back to that 90%, right, Right. is diet and lifestyle and only 10% of genetics. So if we could really drive that point home to our listeners... Maybe mm-hmm. <laughs> we will, you know, spark and then, and then, uh, an interest. And then help people make that conscious decision 
that they are not going to go down that path if they have that genetic susceptibility to some kind of disease. And all we have to do is look at what our parents and grandparents had, and we know we might have that susceptibility, but we don't have to go down their path. Yeah, no, we don't. So it's really about what we're choosing to eat for the most part. That's a lifestyle habit. You know, I choose to eat real proteins, Mm -hmm. healthy proteins, usually from grass fed uh, animals. I choose lots of vegetables, Mm -hmm. (laughs) lots and lots of vegetables. Right. And I choose healthy fats. So a good protein, good carbs, those vegetable carbs and healthy fats. Now, I bet, Carolyn, I bet your mom eats that way, too. Yeah. Yeah, she absolutely does. And she's 92. Mm Mm-hmm. Lives in her own home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't have any help. <laughs> Takes care of other people. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I, I, she's, she's one amazing woman. I got to say that. You know, she's I think currently... maybe she should come and teach some of our classes. <laughs> <laughs> she did come and sit in on one of my classes uh, not that long ago, and she really enjoyed it. So it was really fun. I was really happy to have her in my audience that day. So in reality, autoimmune diseases are caused by a confused immune system. That's interesting way to think about that, isn't mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. Researchers believe that three key factors may be involved. The first factor is that you may have this genetic susceptibility. Okay, but you don't have to go down that path. Secondly, you may get an infection or you may experience some kind of environmental trigger such as eating gluten or um, or you know what Carolyn I was when I was, when you were saying that one of the things that I was thinking is you know the stress that people have been going through lately might be enough of a trigger environmental trigger yes you know I think you mentioned something about people that are in uh, long term facilities and they've had no visitors and are people dying of loneliness yeah you know, so you that's what we mean by environmental triggers or conditions. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I think it's really important to think back. I know whenever I get an autoimmune um, disease person, uh, I always ask, well, where, when did this start and how mm-hmm. do you think it started? Mm-hmm. And we usually can trigger it, go back to an infection yeah. or some or some kind of trigger. Mm hmm. So it's already time for our third break here. Okay. okay. So you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. Next Saturday, I think many of you may want to tune in because Cara and Melanie will be sharing valuable information about incontinence. Nearly half of the women over age 50 experience urine leakage, but haven't shared their problem with their doctor or probably anyone else. (laughs) So incontinence seems to be a hidden condition. So tell your friends about the show because they may be experiencing the same problem. And we will be right back. Well, welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. You know, yesterday I read that 65% of the U.S. population fear getting COVID-19. I can believe that. Yeah, I can too. That's pretty, you know. That's a lot. but So you have to ask yourself, what can you do to support your immune system? So we thought we'd share a few things that we have recommends to our clients. I say, make sure your vitamin D level is 60 or above. Now that's pretty high, but it's protective. You know, a sufficient level of vitamin D is really critical for a well-functioning brain and mm-hmm. body. Both. And Dar, I read that um, the Scandinavian countries mm-hmm who all take a vitamin D supplement, Mm -hmm. you know, because they're pretty far north. Um, They are, they are less affected and the less severe cases of COVID-19 and they're speculating it because they take vitamin D supplements and their vitamin D level is high. So, you know, that's easy. That's a no brainer. Yeah. Just get some. And we live in Minnesota. We don't get enough sun Sun. exposure. So, so the other thing to do is to eat 12 to 14 ounces of quality protein. And quality protein builds your immune function and it supports your moods and your memory. So here's another one. I recommend taking my favorite supplement, three Bifido Balance capsules, three times a day. 
three before breakfast, three before lunch, and three before you go to bed. You know, a good immune system starts in your gut or your intestinal mm-hmm. tract. Yeah. And then sleep seven and a half to nine hours most nights. Yeah, and I've been hearing people are getting a little more sleep during Mm -hmm. this time, so Mm -hmm. I think that that's good. Also, you need to eliminate or avoid eating high sugar processed foods. Uh, You may (laughs) want to bake those brownies or chocolate chip cookies, but then eating them can actually reduce your immune system for several hours. You should also think about eating frequently. I say eat four to six times a day to maintain that balanced blood sugar. High blood sugar is a risk factor, as we already talked about that type 2 diabetes or diabetes. Um, It's a risk factor for uh, complications if you do get COVID-19. And take about 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium glycinate daily at bedtime i love my magnesium i don't even think about going to bed without it and then taking extra vitamin c you could take three thousand to five thousand milligrams uh daily to help with that immune system so these are just a few of the things that we recommend to people there are many other ways to support your immune function such as avoid drinking alcohol because you know what realistically alcohol is not a health food (laughs) So it is now time to be very proactive. I mean, I think we have to really get with this in caring for your body, your brain, and your overall health. This is a great time to focus on this. And I know some of my clients really have taken this seriously. Yes, They're, They're really focusing on it. So before we went to break, we were talking about the three different factors um, that can lead to an autoimmune disease. The first one is your genetics. Mm -hmm. You have a genetic predisposition. And then you can, the second one would be a trigger, like it could be an infection or uh, an environmental trigger, like stress that we were Mm -hmm. talking about. And the third factor is your diet and lifestyle. (laughs) So if we really get honest with ourselves, every one of us, has a tremendous amount of control over what we eat and how we live. And that's a that's an interesting thought for people, I think. We all know that a lack of sleeping five hours or less a night has been associated with development of Alzheimer's disease. But some people still resist developing the eight-hour-a-night sleep habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still have clients that say, oh, no, I, I've never slept eight hours. I only need, like, five. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I try, try, try my best to convince them, and usually they do come along, but it takes, it takes a while. Right. So most of the diseases that land people in the hospital or that result in a disability are lifestyle or food related. Again, back to that 90%. Sadly, most diseases associated with aging are also derived from eating bad food, that processed food, the junk food. Or the standard American diet, (laughs) you know, when will we start realizing that perhaps the most powerful medicine in the world is food? Yes, there are inflammatory foods such as sugar and bread and oatmeal and pizza, chips and wine, beer, popcorn, bagels, fast food, brownies. The list is endless. (laughs) And you know what you just said? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. And I think that always shocks people. Yeah, well, we eaten too much of it. <laughs> Maybe a little bit might be okay, but people are generally eating too much. It used to be one of my favorite foods. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I really don't eat oatmeal anymore at all. <laughs> um, you know, there's, on the other hand, there are foods we consider to be anti-inflammatory. So we want to concentrate on those foods. Some of these foods, and we've talked about this many times, is like grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, Vegetables, 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 and more vegetables, (laughs) plus healthy fats like butter, olive oil, coconut oil, avocados, olives, coconut milk, ghee, avocado oil, all are great fats to work with. Mm -hmm. Some of you may remember Dr. Barry Sears. He's the author of The Zone, which he wrote 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Wow. Uh I remember him saying, food is the most powerful drug we will encounter. You just heard what Dr. Barry Sears wrote 30 years ago. And you know what? We say 
every single week on Dishing Up Nutrition. So eating real food is not new a new concept to all of you listeners out there. <laughs> it still stands as the most powerful thing available to us. More powerful than any drug that has ever been developed. I think that is a major concept to think about. Yeah. That food, what you're putting in your mouth, is more powerful than any medicine that they have developed at this point. And that certainly is for COVID-19. We know that they're struggling with something for that. And they haven't been very successful at finding anything Mm -hmm. yet. And most of the drugs I feel that are out there aren't really, um, they're not curing the underlying problem, right? No, They're just, in many cases, like Harper medication, they're just masking the problem and causing a whole nother set of problems down the road. So even if you think going back to that whole story about uh, celiac disease. If people don't eat gluten, they don't continue to damage their intestinal tract. Right, exactly. So I think that kind of wraps it up for us today, Dar. Okay. It's been a great, uh, great show, I think. So our goal here at Nutritional Weight and Wellness is to help each and every person experience better health through eating real food. It's a simple yet powerful message. Eat Eating real food is life-changing. So thank you all for joining us today. Be well and be safe. Carolyn, thank you. It was a great show. (laughs) Great show. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you enjoy this podcast, please share your favorite episodes with a friend or leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. The content and opinions expressed are those of the hosts or presenters. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Product statements have not been evaluated by the FDA.